class, welcome back to our next set of notes on Unit 2 Populations. Today we'll be discussing human population dynamics, focusing on total fertility rate and uh, the different metrics we use to measure human population growth. To begin with, we'll focus on this, this big question here, what is the carrying capacity for humans on Earth? Uh, we know all populations with limited resources have a carrying capacity, so, so what is it? Well, first of all, we notice we see exponential growth occurring in human population over time, which is shown in this both, both graphs, really. Uh, and then we see this uh, more colorful graph here estimating human population growth, and then the UN's high estimate, medium, and low estimates uh, compared to actual growth. So to see, there really is no easy answer for what is the carrying capacity, as it really has a lot to do with uh, not only population growth, but resource consumption in the future. So there's a varying degree of estimates all the way up to 15, 16 billion, um, down to estimates saying, you know, 6 billion that we've already exceeded it. So quite a range there. There are many factors contributing to population changes. Uh, we have two major categories, density dependent factors, which are factors that the population changes uh, with population size, that it will continue to to move in one direction, to amplify, to get worse in many ways. And then we have density independent factors, where the factor is really not bit changing based on population size. So the dependent things are things like availability of food and water, space, spread of disease, and pollution. Those problems all get worse as there is a greater population density. Something like storms, fires, heat waves, and droughts tend to be as severe as they are regardless of human population size. Um, what do humans do to avoid factors like this? Well, they're all kind of corresponded one to one. So we run out of food and water for density dependent. We're good at importing food and water resources, um, improving agricultural productivity. Now we get more food and water. Um, importing food and water artificially inflates carrying capacity because it allows us to act as if we have more resources than we do, sometimes behaving as those resources are unlimited. Availability of space, we increase our current habitat. We build cities up uh, in skyscrapers. Uh, we expand and, and urban sprawl our suburban areas and neighborhoods, um, continue to expand into, expand into rural communities. Spread of disease, we increase sanitation and medicine. Uh, pollution of air and water, uh, we regulate and monitor our environment and, and curb emissions. Um, and then storms, fires, heat waves, we prep and monitor for severe weather. All these things are ways that we can avoid, uh, at least temporarily, the impacts of these factors. Now, related to this is Malthusian theory. Thomas Malthus was a guy who basically said, our eventually, as a society, we'll reach this point of crisis that's marked here, uh, that food production increases uh, linearly and human population grows exponentially. At some point, there'll be a crisis where population growth exceeds our ability to produce food. It's also important to understand that growth rates are not equal worldwide. World population growth uh, rates are higher in our developed nation or developing nations, excuse me, and lower in the developed nations. So things like our yellow and green countries on this map tend to be seen down here on this yellow arrow for growth rates. And uh, things that are red and orange in our developing nations um, tend to be at a higher growth rate. Uh, less economically developed countries and more economically developed countries, MedC and LEDC, you'll hear used uh, frequently in our class periods to describe these types of countries. Population metrics are also really important. Uh, being able to do calculations and understand the statistics and the demographics of what's happening in each country. So I'm going to take you through a couple of uh, calculations. The first is crude birth and crude death rates. Uh, crude birth is a metric used to determine the number of births per 1,000 people in a population. Um, so in order to do that, the highlighted yellow things will show us the work here, and I'll kind of walk you guys through this. Uh, births in country A, uh, we have the 3,999,380 six births. And we're going to divide that by our total population, which is 307,645,000. You're going to see this number come up quite a bit, 076. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to divide those out and multiply by 1,000. 
and then that is going to equal uh, about 13.0 for our CBR. Okay, so crude birth rate. This same country, now crude death rate, calculated in the same way. So you can see 2,468,000 uh, Put that over that same country's total population of 307 million people. And 076, and then multiply that by 1,000. And you divide that out, and we end up with 8 point zero for the CDR. So looking at this country, uh, crude birth rate, crude death rate, birth rate exceeds death rate, we should logically think this country has an increasing population, at least based on those two factors. Moving forward with country A, the next calculation we'll look at is something called a natural increase rate. The natural increase rate is, is done by using our crude birth rates and crude death rates, um, dividing it by 10 to knock this into a percentage. And um, that's a key, that's a percent, all right? And in order to do this, uh, country A, we can use our same calculations there. So we have uh, CBR is going to be 13.0 minus 8.0 for the CDR, and then divided by 10. That's a nice, easy calculation for us. It gives us a natural increase rate of 0.5% as a, a measure of growth. The other measure of growth is simply referred to the growth rate or percent growth rate. Um, the difference between these two, and you'll see in the, in the calculation, is really right here. Uh, growth rate is a more accurate representation of what's happening inside of a country because it takes into account immigration and emigration. Uh, the CBR ignores this, and it's useful for places where there's a lot of uh, atypical things going on like mass migration, war, disease. So to expand on this calculation, we'll factor in immigration, emigration, um, and see what the more accurate look of this country is going to be. So uh, in order to do that, the CBR plus immigration, these are the ways population increases. Then we're going to subtract that from the ways populations decrease, so a little more accurate. So in this case, the CBR is 13.0 plus immigration. I want to find it there. Immigration was 1 per 100,000, that's important to note. So I add those together, and then I'm going to subtract that from my CDR, which was 8. And then I want to add in emigration is 2. 2 per 1,000 people in the population. Do that math, divide by 10, and that's going to change my answer a little bit from previously to 0.4% for my growth rate. So ideally, we want to be able to use our growth rate all the time, but if we don't have it, we can also use natural increase rate to get a picture of what's happening inside of a country. In our last set of calculations here, we have our doubling time to predict future growth and our exponential growth model. We'll work our way through those two examples. So using country A uh, statistics we've been working with before, the growth rate was uh, 0.4 percent. So I want to figure out the doubling time, which is the number of years in which the population size doubles. Uh, we'll use something called the rule of 70 for that, and it's a nice easy rule. Uh, we just take 70 always on the top of our calculation and divide that by our percent growth rate or natural increase rate if that's all we have. Okay, So 70 divided by 0.04 percent equals uh, approximately 175 years. So in 175 years it will take this population to double at that growth rate. Uh, if we have a negative growth rate, uh, th if this is a negative number down here, uh, we can't really calculate a uh, doubling time as there isn't any. Um, we could calculate something called halving time, um, but we'll save that for later. Uh, exponential growth model uses our NERT formula. N is the current population. E is a constant, so that's right in your calculator. R is growth rate as a decimal. This is really important to change that. Divide by 100. And T is the time in years. The example here for country A is a population of 307 million, so the same population. So that's my N right there. E is always the same, so we got that locked in. R is this, but we have to divide it by 100 to get rid of the percent. 
x and that equals 0 0.004. So that's my growth rate. And t is the time in years, that's 50 right there. So we can go ahead and plug all this stuff in together. 307,645,076. Uh, E, and this is in your calculator, there's an e to the x in parentheses here. And then we're going to go ahead and put the growth rate as a decimal, 0 0.004 times 50. You can put this all in one shot as long as you close your parentheses up and have your population number here and the e to the x um, in your graphing calculator. And if we go ahead and answer this out, you should have gotten uh, 375,758,000 544 as your, your answer here. So this exponential growth model saying if population grows at that consistent rate for 50 years, this would be the population we would have in the future. Populations also have some, some key indicators, some other statistics we're not necessarily going to have to calculate, but we should understand. Um, two involve fertility, uh, which refers to the number of uh, children born to a woman during her lifetime. So total fertility rate is just that. Uh, it will be a number that represents how many uh, children a woman will have. Um, we also have replacement fertility, which is a metric uh, used in countries to explain how many children do parents need to have to replace themselves. So you would think two, but even in developed nations, 2.1 tends to be the replacement level fertility to offset infant mortality, which we'll talk about next. In developing nations, infant mortality is higher, and uh, they will have a higher replacement fertility due to that. Some factors that influence fertility rates, things that are going to influence women from having um, a set number of kids in their lifespan, uh, one is importance of children in the workforce. If we need children to help or labor, we tend to see more or higher rates of fertility. Uh, cost of raising a child, the more expensive a child is, we tend to see lower fertility. Education, employment opportunities for women tend to lower fertility as women are delaying uh, the age they have children. Average age of marriage, same thing, delaying the age of children. Access to health care, family planning, birth control, uh, more access to those things tends to lower fertility in countries. And religious beliefs, cultures, and traditions can also influence fertility in a number of ways as well. Another key population indicator is infant mortality. This is really used as a measure for uh, a country's health overall, this and life expectancy. Um, the number of, of deaths, infant deaths, per 1,000, one uh, an infant defined as one year of age or less. Uh, this is used as an overall indicator of human health and things that can influence this is access to health care, access to proper nutri nutrition, maternal education, and overall these things kind of come with a country's GDP or uh, overall economic growth tend to correlate strongly with these factors.